Uh, hi, my name is Andy Reese. I'm a professor of geography in the Department of Geography and Geology here at uh, University of Southern Mississippi. And if you're watching this video, I thank you for your interest in the 2017 uh, British Studies uh, program, <clears throat> specifically the, the geography offering, a course simply entitled The Geography of Great Britain. I'm really excited about the summer. This will be the third summer that I've taught the course, though uh, first time in 10 years. Last time I taught the course was in 2006. So anyway, I'm energized and, and, and really looking forward to this summer. Um, but what I want to do today is, is kind of walk through a little presentation and give you an idea of, of what you would be getting yourself into uh, if, you, if you chose to take the geography offering. Um, if you look at a cityscape like that, modern day London, and you see Tower Bridge, and you see the Shard, and, and St. Paul's, and, and, and other sort of landmarks around the city, you're looking at a complete and utter built environment. I mean, you're looking at an environment that doesn't look anything like what it used to or, or what it did naturally. And that's sort of the gist of the course, uh, walking through how the, the land formed, the actual island of Great Britain formed, uh, how it uh, geologically, how it transformed and evolved over time, then once humans arrive on the scene, uh, how uh, they developed it all the way up to, to modern day. And the story really starts in the early Carboniferous period. Um, the, the land that would, the landform that would become the island of Great Britain sort of forms right here, uh, right around the equator um, in, the, in the shallow sea. And from that, uh, you get a couple of, um, of true landmarks around the island of Great Britain uh, coming out of that. The White Cliffs of Dover, this is actually the, the Seven Sisters uh, down in Brighton, but the southern coast of, of, of Great Britain is sort of exposed with these chalk, chalk cliffs, calcium carbonate of all these little organisms, their shells that lived in that shallow sea as it was uplifted um, many, many mil million years ago. And then also coal. Uh, nothing, as the old saying goes, there's nothing in the world like Welsh coal, uh, very rich coal deposits. Uh, that's because this, this land used to be near the equator, would have been sort of a dense tropical rainforest kind of environment. All that biomass has to die, falls to the ground, and eventually gets reworked and, and forms these, these very rich coal deposits. Uh, two pictures from Big Pit coal mine just outside of Cardiff, and the Brecon Beacons, is, which is one place that we will visit uh, during the course of the trip. Fast forwarding in time a lot, okay, you've got um, sort of the, the last ice age, and so the ice extent over Great Britain 27,000 years ago, 23,000 years ago, 19 and 18. So as we start to slowly get warmer, uh, the ice starts to peel back. But you'll notice that even during the maximum ice extent, uh, the northern part of, of Great Britain, kind of this little arm extending down to Cardiff, Wales, uh, this was all glaciated. However, the southern part of the island was not, which gives Kind of contrast and, and landscapes from the big glacial U-shaped valleys that you get in Scotland, very beautiful, to the sort of flat rolling topography that you would get around Shropshire or, or Herefordshire, sort of in this part, the unglaciated part of, uh, of Great Britain, and we will see all of those. Um, first couple weeks of the class, though, we do focus in on, on London. Uh, London was uh, sort of, for, even though there was, there was evidence of humans living there, prior to the Roman era, uh, era sorry. Uh, the Romans sort of were the first to formally um, sort of set foot, set foot at this location in the first century AD. Uh, you see sort of a, a general sketch of what we think uh, uh, Londinium, uh, that the Roman settlement used to look like. Essentially where London is located is the first place uh, that you get to up the Thames that's narrow enough to build a Roman style bridge okay, at the time that was still deep enough to, to where they could uh, navigated. But you see the, at least the south bank of the Thames looks nothing like it does uh, today. Uh, very sort of wide channel. <clears throat> so you get these uh, little islands and sort of marshy areas uh, on the south side. Uh, you also see some, uh, some natural landforms like rivers and creeks. There's Walbrook right here. Here's the Great Fleet River and the Fleet uh, River estuary that was uh, such a key part of livelihood back in the Roman times. And you look at Again, the modern day landscape and see how narrow the river is now, and there's no rivers here. I mean, the Fleet River has been just completely parking lot, parking lot and over, so to speak. You know, it would exit right here at the Blackfriars Bridge, and you can see that little, um, that little exit point during low tide sometimes. But um, essentially, all this land on the south side of the river is completely built up. It would have been there naturally, and all these, uh, dozens of subterranean rivers that, that have now disappeared and run below the, the modern London landscape. 
just some, some quick trip highlights of what we're planning to do. I kind of pride myself on only two classroom days total during the month. Um, it's actually four half days uh, if you want to get technical. Um, but what we're going to be doing is outside every day. I've got, I've got field trips planned, um, other sort of projects uh, out exploring around. I've been extensive touring of London, looking at the development uh, of the city. Uh, we'll go to Kew Gardens, um, probably the, the premier botanical gardens on the planet. Also Greenwich, uh, talk about latitude and longitude and John Harrison and the sort of seat of scientific power back then and what the Royal Observatory there in Greenwich, uh, Greenwich meant to everybody. Uh, as mentioned before, we'll go to the White uh, the, the Chalk Cliffs down in Brighton, hike the Seven Sisters. We'll go down uh, Big Pit Coal Mine, walk right up to the coal face uh, in the Brecon Beacons. On the way back, we'll hit Bath and talk about the geothermal and the geology uh, underneath the ground there. Uh, we do have a, a, a four or five day road trip plan, which will take us up through uh, western, uh, western England, uh, up through uh, the Lake Districts here. Uh, where we get our first sort of sense of, of, of glaciated England. Uh, we go up to spend a, a night in Sterling, talk about how, uh, if you, Braveheart, right? Um, William Wallace, and talk about how just the topography of that area, a Battle of Bannockburn, Battle of Sterling Bridge, how that played into the victory of the Scots. Uh, then also tour a, a, a Scotch distillery, talk about Scotch whiskey and why it tastes the way it does, okay? Because most of the grains are fired with peat and that's what gives it its earthy, Kind of flavor. I will also go up to the New Caledonian Canal in Loch Ness. We'll hike up Ben Wyvis, which, uh, which is in Monroe and the National uh, Scottish National Reserve, uh, and then uh, head off uh, one day to the Orkney Islands, which is a couple of islands in the Orkney chains or national heritage sites all into themselves, uh, where we get a great sort of sense of Neolithic man, uh, Stone Age man, and, and their settlements. What would it used to look like? Well, you see a shot of uh, Ben Wyvis right there in the National Park, but uh, you get contact information, uh, British Studies website, or you can email me with specifics directly at andy.reese at usm.edu. Thank you.